ORCA. I'll do it one more time for the recording. I'll call this meeting of ORCA to of the ORCA Finance Committee to order. Um, any corrections, additions, or omissions for the agenda? Okay, we'll assume that is good and have an agenda. Um, first, Tiffany, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Greg. Can you? Yeah. Um, gonna ask Tiffany if she could put the agenda up on the screen, please. Well, I can do it. Okay. Uh, if I could get the right screen, sorry. All right, great. Make it a little bigger if you could. Yep. And remember, you can you can zoom in on on your meeting your your uh, Zoom screen too, right? Whoops. Did I just stop sharing? Or uh, yeah, I think so. Sorry about that. Try this one more time. All right. Oh, I think I think Tiffany was sharing before. Sorry. I'm I'm sharing, and I is it big enough? I'm I think I'm sharing now, right? I I feel like mine's sharing. Huh. It says okay. you are screen sharing. Okay. But regardless, it's up there. Yes. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. So first up is uh the minutes, the draft minutes from May 8th, 2024. Um, and Jill, we're gonna lose Randy at uh, in half an hour. So um and we should be done by 9 30 as well, is is the plan, is the goal. Um can I get a, a motion to approve the minutes if there are no changes or corrections that needed? Move to approve the minutes as presented. I'll second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes as presented for May 8th. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, that will move on to new business. We've got the uh, 24 budget end of year report. And thank you to Len for creating this three-year budget forecast that was great to uh, look through and we'll we'll pass it over to uh, Lynn to I'll stop my share now but I can do what I can share if you want Lynn uh, we'll pass it over to go over the end of the year 24 budget and uh, or third quarter excuse me as well as the the 25 budget forecast Okay, great. So before handing it off to Lynn, I think I'll just say a few things and then, yeah, and then we'll walk through uh, the document. Just quickly uh, answer any questions about the document that's up on our screen now. So just, um, just wanted to acknowledge, as you've probably all seen in, in, in the media, there have been several large cases of fraud and financial mismanagement at some local governments in Washington. So this is something Lynn and I talk regularly about. Um, Lynn runs a tight finance department with Laura, Cock Laura Crawford, our our, our finance specialist and Debbie and the rest of the admin team and the rest of the agency. So I just wanted to mention, you know, that Lynn and I take this financial responsibility of the, of the agency very seriously. Um, and again, it's critical to the ongoing success of the agency, preventing the kinds of fraud and mismanagement management that we do see in the media. So we certainly welcome your questions and suggestions and recommendations. Um, Lynn you know, spends a lot of time putting these reports together, um, but really it's for you to make sure that you all as finance committee and as board members have the information that you need for to be playing your oversight role at the agency. So look forward to going through this with you. Um, uh, Again, so what we've got up on or the screen now is, and what Lynn will talk about first is the the, the year end fiscal year 2024, the year the fiscal year that closed out on July 31st of this year. Um, June 30th. Yes, sorry, June 30th. Okay. Yes. Just putting a little tough yep. on me. Yep. Don't pay attention. <laughs> yeah, paying attention. All right. Um, uh, and so just, I think fiscal year 2024 was a strong year for the agency. We've managed, we managed significant personnel changes. I mean, I was, as I was putting my notes together, I was thinking about all that we went through in the last fiscal year. And uh, again, Mark Gooden, Robert Moody, two longtime uh, employees with the agency both left, um, left. So that created an opportunity for some reorganization. We created us. Uh, Three new positions, an inspector, record specialist, finance specialist to address needs that the agency has. Um, we did do a small budget amendment in, in January, just wanted to remind you about that. 
Um, and then I guess another highlight was certainly the large penalty uh, settlement from Crown Cork and Seal that we brought it that came in last year that uh, clearly is reflected in the budget document. So with that, I think I'll turn it over to Lynn. And Tiffany, if you could make that a bit bigger on the screen, that would be great. Uh, yep, yeah, that I think that's good there. Great. So Lynn, thanks. Yeah, great. Thank you, Jeff. Um, thank you, Tiffany, for your assistance here. So what you have before you is our comparative summary of our income and our expenditures for the fiscal year 2024. And if you could scroll down a little bit, Tiffany, just to bring up our totals. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Perfect. So what you're seeing, of course, is a comparative to last, uh, formerly our fiscal year 2023 to 2024. It gives you some inform, in, inform, information, uh, statistics, where we were at both fiscal year ends, 23-24. And we had a budget of 3.1 million for fiscal year 24, and we brought in 5.3 million. As Jeff indicated, it was a result of a fairly large penalty from one of our sources. Uh, bringing in 2.4 million overall for the year. And, uh, you know, without the, the penalty, we were, we'd still exceed our budget. So it wasn't just the penalty that brought in the ex excess money. We had additional money from a couple of the other uh, sources of revenue, specifically our NOC, notice of construction at the top, budgeted 150, 64, and we brought in 268. Um, and, and that's just a, that's a great sign of again the, the businesses uh, in our six counties are expanding and building and um, our and our permitting team is just has been very busy. Agreed, definitely. So uh, and it's a good trend because you'll see that in the previous years as well. Um, pretty much that is uh, the largest uh, next to the penalty that we received in ex or actually our investment income. Excuse me. We did budget 28 and we ended up collecting 70,000. And of course that was based on uh, a better uh, return on our investment by Thurston County Treasure and two having a slightly higher uh, fund balance near year end. Slightly? Yeah. <laughs> slightly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, and any questions on the revenue before moving to the expenditures? Uh, you know, I know we're not supposed to to cheer when we get notice of violations, but that is a that's a, a sure a nice buffer to make sure that we can continue operations. Yeah, I mean, it's we, we would much prefer everyone to be in compliance, um, and uh, we certainly work hard to work hard on that. But but um, but as it turns out, there's there's all it seems like at least the past number of years there's been a number of facilities that have been out of compliance. So we've had larger than historically than our historical average uh, in our in our, in penalty revenue in the past number of years and what for for budget plans i mean i see penalties at 45 percent right now but what what do we usually project them at does that change with these significant um penalties over the last couple of years we typically budget fifty thousand dollars and one of the handouts in our three-year forecast includes a look back uh, from 2014 to present of all of our revenue sources. So the penalties, you'll be able to see the historical uh, dollar amount that we brought in. But to answer your question, we have previously years budgeted $50,000 for penalties. Gotcha, thank you. All right, any other questions? Jill or Andy, please speak up if you got any. Oh, I just would, uh, it concerns me about penalties. I don't think we should be um, banking on them. And I'm especially concerned because more and more mills are shutting down and we need, we need balance. I hope that, that uh, in any of these that crown cork and seal, I hope that huge penalty doesn't eventually put them under. I don't know. That scares me. Mm -hmm. Port right. Angeles mm -hmm. mills shut down. My son's dismantling Sunoco up in Sumner because he work, he's a mill, right? 
Hmm. It's like all these millets going down is scary. Sure is. And I agree with uh, everything she just said. One of the things I pushed the last time, if you remember, is I don't believe we should be actually using it as part of our internal budget. We should have a separate fund with these so that we don't do that and don't make that mistake. Because when you have a year that these things don't happen and you may have to start making it happen in order to make budget, that's not a place I ever want to be. Right. Yeah. Great. I still say sure. I still say we should reconsider that and change our budget to where that is a separate item, a separate line item, and that we could choose to spend things out of it during the year if we wanted to. That's where I'm at. Penalty should be used for education, but not for survival. They give me a good points. Um, Jeff, do you, you want to respond to that? I know we talked a little bit about that separate fund before and kind of had moved moved on past it. But do you want to remind us and maybe give Jill a little more information about that idea? Sure. So in past, um, I think in, at the May, um, uh, at a, maybe the April and May Finance Committee meetings we were talking, um, we did have a, a draft resolution about to put some guidelines on our use of revenue for penalties and settlements. And yes, I mean, I agree that we we certainly, we need to look carefully at this and we, um, education, outreach, that kind or other projects along those lines is I think historically how the agency has, has used penalty funds. Um, we, there was, I think the committee at that point, at when back in April, the last time we talked about it, didn't want to move forward with the the draft resolution. Um, rather wanted to look at like the, the the forecast that we'll get to next and have more of a discussion about the forecast um, before deciding to move down the path of a resolution. Is my recollection, but I'll look to Greg and Randy who were and Lynn or Lynn who were both part of that discussion. Um I I that's how I remember it, yeah. That's how I remember it as well. But again, uh I don't know that we actually have the vote, but I am definitely still in the same place I was before. I don't think it's appropriate to use these funds into our regular budget. Uh I just I'm not gonna be able to change my mind on that because once you do, I've seen it happen over and over again. It's it's a slippery slope and I'm not comfortable with it. We haven't had to do it in the past. I don't want to start doing it in the future. So if we get an opportunity, I still want to see that resolution. I still want to put it through. And uh, that's where I'm at on it still. Well, I'd say, Randy, let's go through the uh, conversation here that we've already got queued up about the three-year projection that deals with this too. And if you're you know, still feeling that way at the end of this finance committee meeting, you might get a different vote today. So I, I'd, I'd welcome a motion. We don't, we want to, you know, if we need to talk about this as a full board, then let's talk about it as a full board. Agreed, but I'm going to have to leave, like I said, just about another six minutes. Gotcha. My apologies. Okay. Well, no, no, no. We, we want you to be able to do that. Maybe, um, can, you, can you give us the, the cliff notes, Lynn, and of the, the projections, and then let's just see if the finance committee wants to um, make a motion. I'm sorry. Say that again, Greg. Can you jump into the uh, three-year projection, you know, specifically talking kind of about how it's um, uh, planning for this this large fine and fines in the future and see if this uh, ameliorates the concerns that both Randy and Jill have talked about with making sure that we don't use uh, depend on 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 the revenue from fines as uh, you know a, a budget okay so so Tiffany if you could quit sharing this document and then go toward the three-year forecast but before so this is probably a longer discussion than just a few minutes um, but uh, um, but again, so this is something that the committee asked for during our main meeting um, when we were talking about the resolution. Um, and Jim asked for a five-year projection. Lynn and I decided to start with the three-year forecast because we feel that's enough to show patterns in the trajectory. But frankly, there are just so many unknowns that the years four and five just don't really mean a lot, I don't believe. And then Randy, you would also ask for a three-year look back. And so that's what's shown on this document. Um, uh, so, so Tiffany, can you pull up the three-year forecast? 
was the second document linked from the uh, agenda. Can't hear you. Oh, right. Yep, there we go. So uh, I think actually going to the fund balance, sure. we should do, if you could go to page two, please, Tiffany. There we go. And yes. if you can make it a little, a little bit bigger. bigger. Um, and again, there are a number of assumptions in here. Um, so, Lynn, let, let me just in order to... to... Right. In a, in a nutshell here, before we lose uh, uh, Randy, uh, so appropriations that we are looking at to balance our budget, um, uh, fiscal years 26, 27, and 28, those are the three-year budget projections and forecasts that you'll see on the far right. We estimate that uh, in consideration of the large penalty that we did receive last fiscal year and other revenue sources, we're gonna have a zero restrict, unrestricted fund balance starting uh, in fiscal year 2029. So if you scroll down just a little bit more, Tiffany, then we're gonna see that, there we go, perfect. As you can see on the lower right-hand corner, ending undesignated fund balance, we're estimating we're going to have about $500,000 in our checking account as an unrestricted, meaning we're going to be able to use those funds for balancing future budget years. Again, fiscal year 26, 27, 28, these are all estimates, total estimates. There's, there, there's no magic here. Mm -hmm. and based And these numbers estimate and uh, based on prior year historical data and, and using a modest 3% EPI for the revenue and unfortunately a higher increase on uh, staff salaries. Staff salaries are estimated at 5% each fiscal year. That includes a 3% cost of living salary adjustment plus staff step increases. In addition to that, there's a 4% increase on health benefits, paid family medical leave, l &I, that is also included in the budget. So the expenditures that are estimated are in there at a higher amount than what we are projecting the source of revenue to increase with fees. As, and again, that's as long as the fee. So at this point, we're projecting a fee increase of just the the, on our fee programs, as well as our assessments of 3% based on CPI. Um, what's not included in here and that we are busy working on is, is doing a workload and an analysis of our fee programs. We know, as we've talked about in the past, our fee programs, particularly our new source review program, um, but, uh, but registration asbestos are not currently paying for themselves. So we're supplementing those programs with uh, with with other with other money, and so we we're working with the team here to in the next in the coming months expect to be in the next six months or so to bring some some of our analysis and our uh, recommendations uh, to this committee to look at uh, making further fee adjustments because again our fee programs need to bring in more more money so that because that's. I mean, I guess there's a number of things going on. We've, as I mentioned, we've had some staff turnover, um, and so we've created some new positions, um, and and that's going to continue. Uh, we've got a number of of senior staff that will be leaving in the coming yeah. months and years, and so they, I believe the agency is in a good position to absorb that. But but while um, yeah, well, well, while keeping this in mind, um, looking at our at our fee revenue. Um, so actually, let me stop there because I know we're about, we're about to lose Randy. Yeah, fee program expenses need to be self supporting. Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I just want to add something before I go. You know, uh, and I'm not trying to be rude about it. It's there's the simplicity of budgeting. I've been a, been a county commissioner now for 12 years. I uh, pulled off things that nobody else would have even dreamed of. One of the things I pulled off is we have put more money away while not raising taxes in years. Literally, we haven't even taken our automatic 1%. But one of the first rules that we had to learn is to live within our means, not 
uh, according to what we can pull in. As soon as you learn that, that's when you start budgeting different and you look differently. There's an old expression. The amount of papers I carry is in direct correlation with the size of my briefcase. The bigger my briefcase, the more papers I'll carry. So I just want to put that out there that uh, the budgets are always going to look like this when that's how we look at the budget. It's just the way it is. When we budget according to live within our means, then that changes what those numbers look like in the end. You know, 5% increase every year for employees and stuff. We don't do that at my county. We just don't. But we've had some pretty hefty increases that we've done here. But that's because we can. I'm just not a fan of things like that. And I know that if we take that money and we separate it out, we'll budget accordingly and we'll live within that means. So that's where I'm at on that. Thanks, Randy. You're the first so, county I've heard that does not take the, the 1% increase. I, mean, I know. <laughs> it's unheard of. I'll tell you even, I'll make it even further. Back in 2017, we got down to 175,000 cash on hand. Uh, that's in the middle of the year. Of course, you know how counties are. We don't have money coming in all the time. We mm -hmm. got down to the lowest possible level. Uh, we're supposed to keep a 2% uh, to 3% reserve, and we didn't. So with that being said, I now run $29 million cash on hand. I moved us over to a cash basis instead of accrual. We've lived within our means, and we have not taken a tax increase since 2017. Hard to That's believe, impressive. huh? Yeah, but no, literally, I've got twenty nine million cash on hand. That's that's hard to. So you can understand why I feel the way I do. There are ways to do it. It's hard, but I still think it starts with taking these excess monies that come in and separating them out. That's what I did with our budget. I set up all these different reserves on the side so people couldn't touch it, and then we lived within the means of the monies that were coming in regularly. Uh, looking at the bow wave, it really makes a difference on how you budget. Thanks, so, Randy. I think that's good. We warmed you up for the forum here, right? You got, yeah. uh, got a little <laughs> stump speech in, and uh, I want to make sure you, you leave enough time to get in and everything, but really. All really right, guys. Here. Have, have a great one, and I apologize. Bye. Nope, it's okay. All right, well, we can still come back and, and, and talk a little bit about Randy's uh, concerns or what action we might want to take to the bigger board, Jill, when we're, we're done with uh, Lynn's presentation. So, sorry. Sorry to kind of uh, fudge around with the order a little bit, but please proceed, Lynn. Well, that's okay. Sure. So, if, uh, Tiffany, if you could uh, bring us back to the document one, where we were looking at the revenue and expenditures for fiscal year end 2024, that would be most helpful. Yes, thank you. That's it. Thank you. All right. So, we are now seeing the fiscal year 2024 expenditures. And again, uh, we uh, budgeted, you know, 3.3 million. That included our budget amendment. The largest portion, of course, was our salaries and benefits at 95. Looks like that's saying 95%. So if you could scroll down, Tiffany. Yeah, I see. Right. Um, so. Yeah. So. Um, You'll see that, uh, let's see, we were under budget. We didn't expend as much as we thought we would. If you could scroll down a little bit more so we can capture the bottom. It's there, perfect, yes. So um, we had a budget approval of 3.2 million and we spent a little over 3 million. And as you can see, we did uh, place a little over 2 million in our reserve account along with a payback to uh, the general fund from the Title V temporary loan. And anything unusual in the expenditures? No, we did, looks like uh, we didn't expend as much in our leasehold improvement. We didn't change out the HVAC units that we did budget and we have moved that to our current fiscal year 2025. Uh, we'll likely be going out for, for bid on that. But other than that, there's nothing unusual that uh, I can share with you. Any questions? Or Jeff, do you have any additions? I don't have anything to add. I just open it up for questions. 
Jill, comments. any questions or comments? I, I think I think it looks good. It's uh, you know, as 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 Randy says, Lynn right runs a tight ship. So I really appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you. It takes a team, more than one person for sure. Yeah. So if we could uh, move to page two, Tiffany, to the fund balance. I'll keep scrolling down. Perfect. Yes. Okay. All right. Just slightly up. If you could just scroll a little bit up, so you'll see your beginning fund balance, July 1, 2023, 2.2 .2 million. When you add our revenue of 5.3 million and take away our expenditures of a little over three, uh, the, we had 4.6 million in the checking account with Thurston County Treasures. And by scrolling down further, you'll see the, the board supported reserve accounts or contingency accounts, I should say, amounting to 1.1 million. And we have an unrestricted fund balance of 3.4 million. These are all board approved contingency funds mm -hmm. that have been set aside and established. And, you know, one of the things that you're not seeing that could be a possibility, I'm speaking out loud, Jeff, mm -hmm. is establishing a, um, an IT reserve account, which mm -hmm. we don't have in terms of replacements because we are on a schedule. Our IT system administrators place staff on schedules for change outs. So we, so we're staying up with the current, you know, standards and industry and, you know, keeping up to date too with your hardware reduces your, your cyber issues as well. It's just not software alone. But, um, so, and the board may determine at any time that a reserve account is no longer necessary, or again, that we establish additional ones. And this kind of ties into what Randy was just saying too, establishing uh, reserve accounts. That's a, it, it's a good idea. Like I said, ORCA doesn't have an information technology system reserve. Um, instead, we estimate what our expenditures are during the course of our each annual budget that the board approves. So, and that's part of cash basis too. You include it in your, you expense it in the year that you incur it. Right. One thing that's, uh, I'll add to what Lynn said in terms of this, that's IT related. We do have a contingency for, for the database. And that's right now, as you can see in there, 250,000. Um, we are, right now, there's a small team of us that are working. We are hoping to go out for a request for proposals in the next few months to, um, uh, to, to develop, work with a vendor to develop a new database system. We're currently using a 20 year old uh, a database uh, that's limping along, but we really need a new database. And so again, with this point, we're not sure what that cost is going to be. We do have money in the contingency, but we're in the coming months, we'll be getting better estimates there, talking to some vendors um, uh, so that we can better estimate what the RFP amount is going to be. So, but that's, it's getting, we've got money set aside, but we really don't know exactly what that's going to be the agency over the coming years but it's i think we've agency has done very well with our current system mm -hmm. um and but it's definitely time to invest uh we depend on our database for for basically everything we do from our timekeeping to of course managing our documents and, um everything else and we're also adding is until we identify and attain what our new database is going to look like and find that new vendor, we're going to continue to keep adding um, funds to the contingency fund for the database. And um, not only will there be a purchase price and investment, but there's going to be your ongoing maintenance that will be paying. It's just like your subscription base. You can't just buy a database off the shelf anymore or a software package. Everything's turning into subscription-based uh, mm -hmm. purchasing and um, and you're going to see that on the three-year forecast as well why some of the line items are increasing fairly significant is because the the higher cost of those uh, subscription-based um, purchases that you know the market now is it's pushing out there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so this wraps up our fund balance 
um, and our fiscal year 2024 review. Any questions? Well, I mean, it's uh, pretty pretty healthy, of course. Um, I think going going back to the the, the concern that Jill and, and Randy voiced, it seems like it, we should have a larger conversation about, I guess, whether to get a policy on, you know, I think talking about an IT reserve makes a lot of sense as, as a group, maybe not today, but broach the topic. And then also, do we want to create a separate fund for um, uh, for penalty revenue? And you know, as Jill suggested, designate some uses for that. Or create a policy like it can only be used for education. Or do we want to? I mean, when we, it like when I look at those, you know, three year projections always kind of look like a crashing end of a of a um, of a budget, right? Everything goes into the red basically you, you kind of you want to be conservative in your revenue expectations and and uh and realistic about staffing expectations and you know we have had maybe unlike uh, mason county cost of living increases and that's you know part of the reason i think we have st have had staff for their you know for a long long career with orca which really adds to the institutional ability of, of orca in my opinion so um I don't know. I guess I'm asking Jill, Jeff, and Lynn, how how during like the finance recap should we broach this to continue the conversation without derailing the rest of the meeting? Oh, when this comes up for the with, with the full board? Yeah. I, I, Jeff, can I say, yeah. I, I would like to propose that we continue this into our next finance committee meeting that is now scheduled for November. And November, we have on the agenda to discuss our first quarter fiscal year 2025 financial report. If we start at 8.30 again, uh, have the 15, 20 minute discussion on the first quarter, that leaves us an hour to discuss an important issue, reserves, okay. the contingency set-asides and how to handle future penalties and letting the board know that the finance committee will be discussing it with staff and bringing back a proposal uh, might be a good starting point. Sure, and I, I and I know that I mean I'm assuming that Jim will be at the November meetings, and I know he has some strong feelings about mm -hmm. this. He was one of the ones I think that suggested tabling the resolution, so having him part of the discussion would would I think be good as well. Okay, I'll, I'll mention that we're going to discuss it at the November finance meeting. And um, Jill, I would just, you are still part of the finance committee. I, I'd, I'd ask if you were able to in the, in the November meeting, please come to the finance meeting to make sure we have. Oh, okay. I, I didn't understand that. I thought I was just alternate. So I was only supposed to be here <laughs> if somebody was missing. I, th I think you we need you here when somebody is missing, but you can <laughs> be there all the time because we four don't uh, constitute a quorum of the ORCA board. Is, is, okay. is that your understanding, Jeff? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Your 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 input, Jill, is always Very welcome valuable. and always always appreciated. Oh, sorry, I didn't understand that before. So, that, you know, it's okay. We all have a lot of meetings, so I I hate to push people into you know meetings when they probably have two others they could choose from. So, but I think you know just I'm sure that Randy, you guys seem to be pretty aligned in the way you're thinking. I think it's good to have those voices at the table as we go through this. Thank you. I wish I could get my budget the way his is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. You know, I mean, there's always there's always a cost. Do you guys usually take the one percent? Yeah, uh, we've had to. It's like yeah, yeah, it's we're a... we're in the deficit and trying to dig out of a hole. Yep. And and I I actually calculated out that one percent last year. It it was a hundred and nineteen thousand is all it was. Yeah, ours is maybe it's like hundred thousand. It's not that significant, but it's, it's critical, right? Yeah, I mean, it's more optics than anything, but it's like, ugh, I don't know. it's tough. Yeah, totally. Um, okay, so the the finance committee report. I'll do it, I guess, unless you want to, Jill. Since I'll be I'll be um, chairing for for Jim. I, I will let you because I go into unanticipated coughing fits right now. I'm oh, no. trying to get over the crud. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a little past oh. it too, but uh, I'm, I'm happy to do it. I'll talk a little bit about what we're going to talk about next year, that the fiscal year 24 ended well. Um, we've got, you know, healthy reserve and just raise the issues that we're going to talk about at the next uh, Fisk Finance Com Committee meeting. Um, anything else 
you guys think I should amplify in that short report? No, okay. I think that. I don't remember seeing that draft resolution that you were referencing. Can, can we uh... haven't done it. We haven't made it yet. We tabled it. Oh, because, it's okay. Uh, yeah, so we're, we'll we'll talk about it at the next finance meeting. Um, we tabled it in uh, while staff and Lynn and, and and Jeff and others were working on this three year projection and everything to kind of see gotcha. you know, how does it fit into this 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 uh, three year um, forecasting and and like gotcha. do we, do we want yeah. to put it into something that we can only use for education or something and what are the potential consequences? So I think that's yeah. And, and in the run up to the November meeting, we'll certainly we'll we'll recirculate that draft resolution so that can be part of our conversation at the November Finance Committee meeting. Okay. Great, thanks. Another crazy thought that I had with uh, use of penalty funds is, is potentially creating some kind of grant program to help a small business that's trying to get in compliance that can't quite get there. To oh, have like some that. kind of grant to yeah. help them. Yes. I care it. That's Give to exactly, public funds though, that's a thing. Yeah, no, I, I would like to have a conversation with the board. I mean, I've wanted to have, you know, as you know, I've talked about the need for strategic planning. Um, and so I think having mm -hmm. a strategic planning conversation and then as part of that is how do we want to strategically use these funds that we have um, and such as towards a small business grant fund um, or other things. I mean, other things that, again, further the the, the, the ORCA mission. Um, so I think there's lots of lots of good ideas and, and possibilities there. So, um, Sounds yes, good. Please. All right, no, great idea. I like it. Okay, anything else for the good of the order? Okay. This finance committee is adjourned and we'll see you back here at the same Zoom room at 10 a.m. for the, the board meeting.